Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Golan Cafe and today we are going to talk about the I.O. Writer Interface. In one of the previous episodes we have seen the I.O. Reader Interface and this is somewhat similar to what we're going to see today. We're just going to see uh, what's the I.O. Writer Interface, what's used for and where it is used in the Go standard library and how you can use it to better leverage uh, the interface and its usage uh, to write better Go programs. Just, let go, just let's go through a couple of examples today. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to obviously see um, the definition of the I.O. writer. It is obviously in the I.O. package as uh, it was the I.O. reader as well. And you can see it only has one method. So as, as the I.O. reader and as a lot of other uh, interfaces uh, which we're going to see um, it only has uh, one method, so it is very, very small, and that allows us to use and combine, it combine the interface in a very easy way uh, throughout uh, different types of programs. Uh, the write interface, the writer interface, has a write method which takes a byte slice, as you can see here, uh, defined as p uh, byte slice. Um, and returns uh, an integer uh, which represents uh, usually should be the length of the bytes uh, that you passed in so to represent the number of uh, successfully written uh, bytes uh, into the underlying data stream and then the error if there was any error while writing obviously this is the, this is defined uh, defined upon a data stream which can be a file can be a network connection uh, it can be any type of of a uh, of file or buffer, if you will, uh, where the data is going to be written into. So in this case, uh, if we say we're going to use a file and the file has the write method, then the bytes, the byte slice is going to be written into the file. So the destination depends obviously on uh, where which data stream it is and you know where the data where the, the write method is being defined upon. Um, so it's, it is pretty straightforward really, so it is like the reader interface. We're just going to uh, go through today an example and um, see a couple of uh, places where the writer interface is being implemented and used in the Go standard library. Uh, obviously it's, uh, it is a bit everywhere as you can imagine uh, whenever we uh, deal with data. So one of the examples is uh, the, the file. So if you go into the go.cos.file you will see that uh, obviously the file it is an abstraction on top of your operating system so no matter what what kind of operating system you you're working with uh, the interface and the overall behavior it is uh, abstracted uh, um, it is abstracted by the go standard library and you will have a very nice and clean uh, interface uh, to work with the, the file system uh, regardless of whether you are on mac or linux or windows and as you've seen in one of the previous episodes, uh, which by the way I will link uh, in the description below, you will see that uh, we've seen the file having a read method and being uh, effectively an implementation of the I.O. reader interface. We can see now that the file also has a write method, so it is also an implementation of the writer interface. And we can better see that if we go into os.file.write, uh, which uh, you can see it is pretty much uh, what we're seeing here, uh, which is the writer interface. So you have a write method, a byte slice, which you can write into the file, and then uh, you will have an, an integer, which represents the number of successfully written bytes and the an error, if there was any error during the operation. So let's just go through an example where we uh, use a file and we use the write method, and we see how that is going to work. So I have an example here, which is uh, a writer.go file. So we just... Uh, going to import the OS package. Uh, we attempt to open the file using open file, which takes a file name, um, file dot, file dot txt, and then it takes a flag, a uh, set of flags really. So the flags are um, basically used to know and to tell uh, whether the file is going, is going to be used for read only, for write only, or for read and write, and some other properties. So in this case, it's write only. And then we use the OR operator to add uh, ulterior flags. So the next flag, uh, we want to also use its uh, create, uh, which means that if the file does not exist, we want to create it. And then 
we want to truncate the file if there's any contents in it. And then we set the permissions. If there was any error, uh, we just panic. Obviously, if this is a production grade system, you wouldn't want to panic. So it's just for brevity and for registration purposes, you don't really have to panic uh, in your program. We attempt to close the file at the end of the main uh, method. So we defer the, the file closure at the end, uh, which the defer keyword will attempt to close the file at the end of the main function. And then there is the file of write, uh, which uh, what we have just seen before. So the file of write takes a byte slice uh, as an input, and uh, we can convert a string into a byte slice by just uh, using the uh, the parentheses in this way, which is gonna just cast the string into a byte slice effectively. Writing some uh, string into the file using write method then we go we print a new line as well so those um, 12 lines of code should be enough for us to basically create a file uh, um, open a file create if it does not exist if it exists we truncate all the contents and then we write uh, a string into the file using the after write method As you can see, we just free them. And if we uh, run it again, this file is gonna have always the same line because the contents are truncated. So let's just do, let's just see, uh, we can write many lines. And this uh, will be reflected in our file. As you can see. So just to, um, just to refresh you on the open file method, so this is what you can use when you open a file. You can just use the open file when you want to specify the flags, you know, if you want specific behaviors and specify the permissions as well. And you can also check the os.o underscore rd only. And you can see the various flags that you can use. You can use read only, write only, read and write. So you need at least one of those three and then any other number of those ones here where you can append the contents, create, truncate, and all of that. Uh, you can also use os.open, which is something we've, been, uh, we've used uh, uh, before. And it, this is just a wrapper on top of uh, open file. It is, as you can see, just uh, you've been uh, opening the file in read-only mode. Um, so this is one of the examples using the file.write. So the file, it is an I.O. writer implementation. Let's see another I.O. writer implementation. So another one, it is uh, the JSON encoder. So when you create a new JSON encoder, for example, you can pass an I.O. writer into the encoder. And what this will do, it will basically allows you to um, write the result of the JSON encoding into the writer you've just chosen. So you can create a, your own writer or you can use some writer you would see now as well that is in the Go standard library. And then whenever you um, encode some uh, data, arbitrary data into JSON format, you can specify the writer. So this is one of the ways in which uh, the writer is being used uh, in the Go standard library. And you have to think that this is not just used in the JSON package, it is used pretty much almost in any kind of package that does data manipulation, like in basis for encoding, you can pass an IO writer, or ASCII encoding, you can pass an IO writer, or even the uh, uh, response writer. Uh, so, response writer. Even the response writer has the uh, write uh, method, so it is effectively an I.O. writer interface as well. So if you ever worked with the HTTP servers, uh, which we're going to see an example in the next episodes as well, well, then in that case you 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 know that this is uh, an I.O. writer interface, an implementation on an I.O. writer interfa uh, interface. So it is effectively it does effectively the same behavior of the other example we've just seen. So now we're just gonna focus on another example, which is the JSON, a new encoder. Uh, so it is a bit clearer on how you can use that. So the first thing we do, we import, obviously, the JSON 
encoder. Uh, we haven't thought about how and what, what kind of data we're going to pass, what kind of writer we're going to pass into the encoder. And uh, one of the things that we can use is uh, the bytes to buffer, which is uh, some sort of uh, very generic and abstract uh, buffer, uh, which can be used in a lot of scenarios. So this buffer, this byte stop buffer, it is effectively an implementation of uh, the IO reader and the IO writer interface as well. As well. So you have to think of this as uh, a memory buffer, like if it's a file in memory. And you can write and read data into the buffer, and this can grow dynamically, as you can see here, grows as well. So the buffer grows uh, automatically, and you push the data into the buffer, and then you can retrieve the data from the buffer. So this is what we're going to use in our example. And as you can see here, there is a write method as well, which is exactly the implementation of the IO writer interface, as we just seen before. So we're going to define the buffer, uh, and then we're going to pass the buffer into the JSON encoder. And then we're going to uh, pass some random data, just some dummy data. We are trying to JSON encode the data, and we will see that the data which is JSON encoded is going to be um, it's gonna be passed into the buffer and then in the buffer we will have the JSON encoded data. We'll see how this, is, how this is used to pass data around different uh, parts of your program. So the first thing we wanna do it is obviously uh, we're gonna remove some of this. Uh, we're gonna leave the file for now, the file thing for now. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna define our buffer or our, our writer and then it's gonna be passed into the uh, encoder, which is done using the new keyword, which creates a new instance of bytes.buffer, and then we create the encoder using json.new encoder. We pass the buffer. So now, each time we use the encoder to encode some data here, which we need to define, uh, the result will be written inside the bytes.buffer. So now we need to define our dummy data. So one of the very common scenarios where you want to encode it is like when you want to create REST APIs and reply in JSON, or you want to encode some data into a file and write it into JSON format. Usually, you know, most of the times what happens is that you want to define a struct and you know you have a, a set of fields and then you want to encode JSON encode a set of fields. So let's just uh, Go through one example where you have a user and you have a name, which is a string, and then you can define the JSON fields uh, and, and uh, tags here. So here we say that the name, which is a string, is going to be uh, whenever we pass this tract into a JSON encoder, uh, this as a JSON is going to result as a, inside a field called name. So we just say which name we want the field it to be. So we just say name is going to be passed into the name field in JSON when converted in JSON. Uh, we have the age as well, which we're going to call age in the JSON file, in the JSON output. So this is just a simple example. We just create some dummy data, user, name, create pop, and age, which is an integer, 10. And then this, we can, this then can be passed into uh, the encode function. The encode function returns an error. So encoder, encode, we pass the, the user. If there was an error, we panic, we check the error. So now, once we encode the, the user, um, once you encode the user into the, uh, using the encoder, this, uh, this will be passed into the buffer that we just passed into the encoder here. So the buffer contains a bytes representation of the user in a JSON format. So here you would expect something like user, sorry, name, Bob, and age, 10. So this is what the actual uh, uh, bytes representation will look like inside the buffer. Because we have defined, remember we have defined the name here, the fields using the JSON tags. So name is going to be encoded as name, age, encoded as age, uh, when encoded in JSON, uh, we encoded it, and we know that the encoder is gonna write all the results into the bytes of buffer. So we just now need to um, write it somewhere or display it somewhere. Uh, we're gonna use something we already opened, so we open the file, we can just uh, write, and uh, 
we can write the buffer and the bytes. So we know that uh, from the bytes.buffer we can retrieve the contents of the, the, the underlying buffer using bytes. So this basically re returns the contents of the bytes uh, buffer that we have just declared. So we should expect then at this point to have a file and inside the file we should, we should expect to have a JSON encoded version of this uh, username Bob and H10. So obviously this needs to be properly encoding JSON. Go run. Whoop. And we also need to import bytes. Import bytes. Go run writer. And then let's check the file. As you can see, you have the result. So this is just a very simple example on how the IO writer interface, it is really almost everywhere in the Go standard library whenever you uh, think about moving data and working with data. Uh, and uh, if you think of it uh, with, together with the IO reader interface, it is a very powerful tool for you to abstract out the behavior of moving data, writing and reading data from and to different uh, data streams. So I hope that was helpful and uh, see you at the next one. Thanks.